The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Good afternoon and welcome to Generations Radio. Uh, we're here every Saturday, Sunday, as you guys know, from 5 to 6, and uh, Saturdays from 5 to 6, Sundays from 3 to 4. As well, we have revamped our website, by the way. So if you see it and going, wow, this is kind of different. It's, it's cleaner. Uh, there's a couple of moving parts on the top page there. You can click on it and go to our radio shows. Click on it again. We'll have a calendar there. We're still building a calendar, but definitely is something that uh, we're very proud of. And thanks to Mark Moran, our new web designer there. Uh, but we still have all our resources there. It's a very easy way to check out past issues. I know people email me and call me. I'm looking for this article in there, and I can't remember which which cover story. I go by the cover story, which issue that was in. So there's a page of all the covers that you can see, uh, and you can search it. You can actually search every article. Go on the search bar and type in Social Security or um, Medicare or Medicaid. You'll see articles that are written up, uh, and it will take you to all the articles. Or if you want to find a writer like a financial advisor, Michael Yee, you can type his name in there and it'll spit out all the articles that he wrote. So uh, thanks to Mark Moran who designed that. And so we're growing the website. And as you guys know, uh, after a couple of weeks, this uh, show will be posted on our website as well. And as, as you guys know, the new thing we have now, we're, we're partnering with KITV News every Saturday morning, about 7.40 in the morning on KITV. Every Saturday morning, they have a segment called Aging Well. And so you'll be seeing our logo there and we'll be providing guests uh, on the topic of aging, healthy aging, financial, legal, including our guests today. Uh, we have Captain Alan Nagata and Talia Burns from HPD. So thank you very much for uh, coming into the show again. So welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, Captain, is it still Captain or did you get the Lieutenant? I major? got to Major, believe it oh, or major, not. Oh, Major, Major, okay. Now, major's a big thing, huh? Kind of, yes. That's like three or four stars. Um, maybe three cuckoo nuts. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to the show. And if you guys missed the last show, how many months ago did we have you on? August, September? August, yeah. August yeah. of last year. And you, guys, and you guys launched in September. That's correct. We launched on the 7th of September. And uh, tell us, so this is about a new program from HPD called Smart 911. And when I heard about it from our friend Scott Spelina, the elder law attorney for the prosecutor's office, I was like, wow, this is pretty neat. And, you know, for us at the magazine, we're all about getting awareness out to the public, whether it's on KITV News, on our Generations Radio or the Generations Magazine or our website. We were always trying to bring this stuff out. When I saw this, um, Talia, uh, I was like, wow, this is really cool. So either one of you want to give our audience again a little brief background on what the program is, why it was brought to Hawaii, and in really simple terms, how it works. Okay, so Smart 911 is a program that allows people to sign up and create a, pro a safety profile. And in that safety profile, they can put their medical conditions, their uh, cell phone numbers, home phone numbers, addresses, anything that they would like for the first responders to know. So in the event of an emergency, um, the first responders will have the information readily available um, and that can be uh, passed on from the, the dispatch center out into the field. Um, the program came um, because of our chief who went to the majors, uh, major city uh, conference and he saw that this was a good program and asked uh, the communication staff to evaluate it. So it took us some time to evaluate it and we did find that this is a valuable uh, tool for our citizens, especially our kupuna. And let's back up. So this is actually to sign up. Where do they go to sign up? www.smart911.com. Dot com, not dot yes. org. Okay. Dot com. So you go to Smart 911 because I, I didn't tell you this before we started on, online, but I'm going to do it right now. So hey, I want to kind of walk people through. So 
essentially they have to go to smart911.com. Yeah, that's correct. So you need an internet connection. You need some kind of computer-enabled device, whether it's on your mobile phone or um, a laptop, but you do need that, definitely. Okay. So they sign up there, and then what happens? Yes, you can create a safety profile. And one of the things that we came across, because we do a lot of presentations for Smart 911, especially for our Kupuna. As an example, we've been to the Seniors Fair. We've been to Moilili Community Center, mm -hmm. as well as Kapuhulu Senior Centers and various uh, independent living, living centers. And one of the things we found out, Percy, was that you need an email address to sign up for the ah. program. And a lot of seniors don't have it. And that is the issue that we're working with uh, Smart 911 to get around that so your listeners and our kupuna can sign up for Smart 911 without an email address. Wait, wait. You created a way to sign up without an email address? Let me clarify that oh. for you. Um, we're working with oh. Smart 911 to oh. create that way. Cause not we, yet. Yes, but we want to get more of our seniors in to make Honolulu safer for them. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, you have a time frame on that at all? Well, we're going to be meeting with them in May in Boston, and that's one of the issues that we're, we've already let them know that uh, via email and, and phone conversations, but we're going to what is called the Charter 50 Conference. And there we want, we want all the other states to know that this is an issue for our Kapuna here and that we want uh, uh, Smart 911 to ensure us that they can do, you know, bypass the, the, the email issue. Can I ask why they, they wanted to have an email address in the beginning? First of all, <laughs> well, it's one way that they can notify the person um, that they need to check their profile, right? To acknowledge that the profile is current. Another way is they can they can send you a message via your phone, but that is one option that they send the uh, alert to your your email. Yeah, actually, I got a, uh, an alert uh, text, and I believe I got an email that to update the phone number. So I on the show last year was August September. We actually did it online. And I'm actually at the website right now, smart911.com. It's very easy. Um, you just put in your name, your email address at this point. Uh, you have to create a user ID. Yeah, that's correct. And you have to have a password. password. So you can put, I mean, I mean, there's nothing vital on this website, right? No, it's not. They there's don't nothing. ask for financial information, social security, any number, personal type of yeah, address. That, there you go. And you shouldn't be putting that information in anyway, social right. security number or financial information. Smart911 doesn't need it. It's all basic information that can help you in case of an emergency. So just in a real big picture, so somebody signs up and, and have you guys used, has, has, has anybody, have there, any of your um, police officers used the, the, the program yet? Let's say they had to find out, can, I, can you answer that? Yeah, of course. You know, um, luckily we haven't used the information yet. Oh, good. And that's kind of a good thing when you really think about it because it's better to have the service and not need it rather than need the service and not have it. But we do get our profiles or those profiles that the people have created popping up in our call center every day. And in the case of an emergency where the caller can't be the sole source of information, that profile is going to help us provide that 911 emergency services. Yeah. So that's so very important. And that's why we want to encourage your listeners, especially your kupunas, to sign up. Yeah. And get that information. Yeah. Well, a lot of our listeners and actually readers of the magazine now are professionals dealing with their parents. Yeah. You know, for so for somebody that like myself, so you you're gonna log on smart911.com, put in your basic information, and so what happens from there? You know what? Um, when you put in that information and you create that safety profile, you're preparing for an emergency. No one prepares to call nine one one. Let's be really honest. I don't. Yeah. Right, but we all get ready for hurricane season every May through November, and we go to the various stores, stock up on canned goods, water, and whatnot, non-perishables. But when you create that account, you're preparing for emergency that's unplanned. And what's more important about Smart 911 is that when you talk about your listeners, they're caring for their parents, correct? A lot of them. When you sign up for Smart 911 or you create a safety profile for your grandparents, your aunties, uncles, you can put in what's called an emergency contact information. And that's probably one of the biggest selling points for this program. Should there be an emergency four in the morning and your kupuna or your auntie or grandparents can't speak, we have a resource to contact the person that's listed. That's really important because actually my neighbor, um, uh, he's got to be 90 plus, the wife's ni early 90s. And I get a, actually a text from their a home security company 
that they called uh, they called 911 and there an ambulance coming cuz I live down a private lane and then uh, I get a, a text saying you know just letting you know we've contacted the daughter but you're the secondary contact so this smart 911 is very important um, so what hap- so what happens so that information when there's a 911 call what happens so I'm, let's say um, my neighbor calls 911 they sign up for the service what happens so their telephone number is the trigger once they call from the phone number that they have listed on their safety po- profile it triggers the software to open up a their automatically do- automatically mm-hmm. so we will see their profile what kind of uh, medical issues they have um, you know contact information we if it's uh they have children in the house and one of their children is missing we can have photos of their children even for kupuna too sometimes we have our kupuna missing so it's good that we have an updated photo in there that we can use and send out to our officers um in my case my father is in his early 80s and he requires oxygen 24 hours a day and in his safety profile I included that information because I want the first responders to know that and I want them to know where he's located in the house in the event that he has to, uh, he calls 911. So I really believe that this program is a good one. I mean, I've done my household. My major has done his household, you know. Um, I really believe that this is something that we can prepare for in the event that we have to call It's like insurance. You don't buy insurance to use it, right? But in the event it happens, it's a fall by plan. Plus, you don't want any, I tell seniors, you don't want any regret. You could have done something. It's like fall prevention. You could have done something. So do something, get exercise or get tested to make sure that your house is safe, you're, 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 balanced, you're in balance, your vision is fine. But it's something that I think everybody should be doing. So um, have you guys linked the fire department yet? Is that coming? You know, great question. Um, right now they're evaluating the service and we'll be coming to a decision soon. Um, our understanding is EMS and Ocean Safety have approved the service and we'll oh. be getting it soon. That's where we're at. But what I wanted to share with your listeners is probably the most important selling point, especially for a Kupuna, is that the service is free. Yeah. How many times we can say it's it. free? And this is being offered by the city and county of Honolulu. We encourage all our attendees at our presentations and we want to extend that offer to your listeners. It's free. Not everybody can afford specialized services. This one's free. That really is special. Isn't it? It really is. Yeah, because not everybody can afford an alarm company or, you know, gardeners. You yeah, you got to pay for all that. This one's free. And so have you guys talked to the Alzheimer's Association? You know, not yet. Okay. Well, because you know that uh, the February, March issue featured Alzheimer's on the cover. And we actually have the director in here. I don't know if you read this, art, this issue yet. The director is Christine Payne. And we're actually, I'm actually on the fall, on the state Alzheimer's plan to implement their plan now. So um, I'm very involved with that. And Christine, I, we just did a webinar yesterday for some of the programs of, of Alzheimer's dementia they have in Hawaii done by Ivy Castellanos. But well, I'll get you in contact with them because, uh, Taylor, when you said having a picture, yeah. you know, every year or several times a year, a senior gets lost. Most of the time they, they find them. Um, I had actually had a personal friend of mine that the, the mother got lost out in um, uh, Ahui Mountain back there, Kahalu, um, in the valley that, a couple of years back. Uh, she was overnight she was walking out there. Um, every year we lose um, seniors downtown. And, you know, sometimes they don't speak English. So, or they're just so disoriented that they don't know. So, you know, we need to protect them that way. But having a picture. I think is so important because it's, it, we need to get that out right away, right? That's correct. Yeah. And <clears throat> as the, you know, if your kapuna is missing and you're making the call to 911 and we have that information available, that can be readily sent to the patrol officers out in the field. And before they even reach your house, they have the information and they can be already looking for your, your missing person. Yeah. And, you know, how many calls are you supposed to get a year, by the way, through 911? One million this last year for 2015 was one million nineteen thousand four hundred two. Believe it or not, total calls for service, wow. of which eight hundred eighty thousand eight hundred forty, I believe, was for police services. Somewhere around that numbers. We do big business, Percy. <laughs> you talking about big business? You're right. Um, so, of the, do you have an idea of that? How many were senior related? Do you have any kind of idea? No. no. I asked my fireman friends who are captains. I said, how many times a day do you go out? 
and how many times a week? And of those visits, how many, what's the kind of ballpark percentage of visits you see to seniors? And I was shocked, almost 70% of their calls they go to are for seniors. And the first thing they look for is the post uh, form or the medical directive if they have it on the refrigerator um, because they don't want to resuscitate if they don't have to. They definitely break a bone in the chest, and if they're frail, it's very difficult. Uh, but I think the 911 service would be very, very good. Um, Absolutely. Because so, that is one piece of information that you can include in your safety profile. Yeah. Really, really important. Well, what I liked about it when, when I talked to you, uh, now Major Nagata, is um, the growth you've had. I mean, yes. I think I, I was expecting maybe a couple hundred a month, but that's not, your figures here are tremendous. So, um, once you go over the numbers with what the growth and wh where you want to be at two or three, four, five years from now. Yeah, you know, we initially started this summer and we started giving presentations and we wanted to thank you because we came this summer and we got the word out. And initially when we started, we had about 97 accounts and that includes going to like the Hawaii School for the Deaf and Blind, partnering with Kapuna Caucus. Oh, great. Right? We partnered also with the Elderly Affairs Division with the City and County of Honolulu because it's great for Kapunas, your listeners, as we talked about. And we pressed forward along with the Hawaii State Library, where they helped us promote our uh, oh. information. Even the Humane Society, because as we said before, he's in pet's That's, part of our family. You're, you're getting ahead of me, Major. Good thank job. you. And um, in September, we had our grand official launch, which we want to thank you for attending and supporting yeah, us. I was there. Yes. Cool. And that's when we had about 1,300, almost 1,400 individuals sign up. But keep in mind, with each safety profile, you have at least two or three phones on it. So right now, we have about almost 3,000 signups. That's about 12,000 phones just in the city and county of Honolulu. Just for Honolulu. For and that's, now. For, for now. now. And that's just after about five months since we launched. And that's pretty good. And when we compare ourselves with a county on the continental United States, and we don't necessarily know what county it is, after 2.5 years, Smart 911 folks tell us they have about 10,000 accounts. We're going to go out and say that we think we're going to beat that number. And we're, we've only been about six months old. So it's getting there. Wow, tremendous job. Congratulations both to both of you. Um, I, and I think, you know, with, with so many boomers listening to our show, we know, uh, listen to, uh, we're going to our website, uh, we really need to get that out further. So how, I mean, what, what is the normal, the normal reaction when you go to a senior fair or, because we have our Aging Young Place workshop coming up in August uh, 20th. Uh, hopefully you guys are going to be there. Yeah, definitely. And thanks for last year. And we, we hope to be there again, as well as the Senior Fair in September. Do you have a way? Well, we, we, here's what my thought. I, I, my mind, I talk fast. My cousin said, you think fast. That's the reason why you talk, talk fast. But how about this? Why don't we have you guys do a presentation there? Oh, that would be wonderful. But you got to come now. Don't be sitting here oh, in no. the office. I yes, you. no, no problem. You, you and Taylor are the stars. You definitely <laughs> have us. Our, our officers do help us with the presentations, yeah, I know, though, I know. because it's uh, quite overwhelming, even though we're a small island. They help us uh, island wide. But we'll be there. Okay. We're glad you want to bring about five or 10 computers. That's the only thing. So I, I don't want to hold you to that, but definitely you need. If, is there a way that you can take the information down? Yes, because, and, you know, and that's it, what we, we've done in the past at some of our fairs. Um, you have a form they fill out? We, we take their name and their number, and we now have a, a, a great volunteer that just started with us, a senior volunteer that we are happy uh, uh, to have with us, and she's going to be helping us to sign up seniors as well. Well, you know, we get, last year we had 1,600 people mm -hmm. there. Uh, I know we're going to get you on TV News very shortly Saturday morning on Aging Well, but you know, they're going to help us promote it this year. So this year is our 10th anniversary of doing the workshop. So we expect Fantastic. over 1,600 people, but each room fits between 70 and 100 people. So we'll have you do a presentation in the morning and then a presentation in the afternoon. Fantastic. So you Glad to have, we. You know, you have, I hopefully we should set a goal, maybe set up 100 to 200 people to sign up. You sure. Know? And we can have, then you can have an exhibit booth as well, have an easy way to sign up because that's the hardest part. I mean, seniors are afraid of technology. Sure. Um, not, some of them don't even have computers. Yes. Yes. So I'm glad, I'm glad you got a little hooked up with uh, Keith over at uh, the library system. Yes, we sure yes. did. Good guy. So um, can you get, dive more into like medical conditions and disabilities? What, what, can, what should somebody, when they sign up, how can, they, how can that help these specific conditions? Um, like you so, mentioned your, your father. Yes. So my fa in my dad's case, of course, he needed oxygen. Um, so we included that in his safety profile, that he is on oxygen 24 hours a day. Um, some mobility concerns, if, you know, you need a, 
you're bedridden, we want to know that because then we, and, and where in the house are you located, in what bedroom? Uh, that will help our first responders to get to you quickly. Um, your medications, what kind of medications you take, if you're allergic to anything, um, all that information will help the first responders. Um, seconds in our business saves lives. So whatever time that we can save by having this information, it helps to save the person. So they would probably put, if they have Alzheimer's or dementia, they should put in, um, if, you know, if they have heart issues, uh, if they're in a wheelchair, uh, medication. Can they put their doctor in there? Yeah, yes, definitely. You yeah. can put that information. That's like a contact information. But this program is great for everyone, but it's really great for Kupunas. Like we talked about earlier, seniors who are prone to wandering, put in that information ahead of time. Give us the physical description, but more importantly, give us the photograph. Mm -hmm. Then we can start looking for your loved ones before the officer even gets there. Because we have what's called mobile data computers in the field in every officer's car. That information can be transferred instantaneously. Yeah, they all the have laptops in the, in the car, Yes, right? exactly. So I think last time we talked about, which I have not done yet, unfortunately, is take a picture of the front door. With some people, you know, I, I visit seniors and houses every week, and you don't know where the front door is. Is it going through the garage? Is it around the corner? Is it is a nice front door that's painted, but you, people, they never use it. So you take a picture or put it in how to get to the front door, right? Exactly. You can give us all that information. Because a lot of times in our extended families here in Honolulu, a lot of times you have your grandparents or your aunties, uncles. They live in the back of the house, and it's only accessible to the, yeah. the stairwell on the Malka Eva corner. And when we get to a house, if we don't know it, because that's true of my house, you knock on the front door, but you're not going to get that person unless you go to the back of the house and use the stairs. So that type of information is really important to put in your safety profile. It can really help. And one thing I also wanted to add about what's great about Smart 911 is it also caters to our Kupuno who does not speak English very well. Because you can put in the uh, safety profile <laughs> exactly that you want a dialogue with an interpreter in your native language. That helps. Oh, takes absolutely. a lot of the frustration out of it, Percy. So have you have an idea? I was thinking about when you're talking about the picture of the house. But you know how you know some of the rural areas... You can't see them. Like my house, our mailman knows us, but I mean, a temporary mailman, they don't know what our, because our, 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 the front of our house, the, 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 the what do you call that? The, the number of the, of the unit, you can't really see real well. And so you can put a, put a picture of that or a picture of the driveway, right? Yeah, that, that's correct. Because one story that I tell is, you know, as a beat officer, we would go to the countryside. We would get sent like on a suspicious circumstance argument. It's probably a domestic. And when we get there, we notice that the homes don't have numbers on it. It's four in the morning. It's completely dark. <laughs> yeah. And they say it's a white house and all the houses down this dirt road are white. <laughs> so we listen. And when we hear glass breaking or screaming, uh, we figure out what house it is. So you're uh, exactly correct. They got to upload a picture, huh? Yeah, you can help us with that. Or the or picture of the pit bull dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's true, huh? But I mean, I hate, I hate to say about pit bulls because I was actually at uh, the dog park Diamond Head and I was taking my dog there for the first time and I saw a big pit bull. Like, uh oh, do we want to go in there? But the guy, the little, the, well, I shouldn't say little dog, the pit bull was so nice. And then I saw another one, he left, another one came in, another one. And I'll tell you, they were very well behaved. So nothing against pit bulls. But yeah, it's so important. So 911 is not, it's going to be for EMS hopefully soon. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, the fire department soon, hopefully. Yes, we hoping, <laughs> and they're evaluating the program. Okay, uh, I'm the fire department. Got to get going. Yeah, we need your listeners to encourage them. Yeah, as well as your legislators. So, where did we, last time we talked about, they were going to expand the neighbor islands. Do you have any idea on the neighbor islands yet? No, the neighbor islands are still watching um, how we do in Honolulu, and then I guess at some point they'll make a decision on whether or not this thing should be expanded out. Yeah, because there is a cost to the county, right? That's correct. Yes, there so is that's a cost why, to that's the reason why it's not automatic, right? Yes. Mm. Are there states that is totally deployed out in all, in the whole um, state? Yes, then there, there is, and Michigan is one of them. Oh, really? And I believe Wisconsin is another. Um, let's be frank, Percy. There's no reason why all the neighbor islands shouldn't have the service because, you know, we're tourist-centered, and when tourists come in and they have a Smart 9 safety profile, that can be used to help them when they visit our great state of Honolulu, Hawaii. So that's one thing we need to do is get the word out so we can have this service on every neighbor island so we can make Honolulu, 
Hawaii overall smart 911 mm. to pre- protect not only our kamaina, but our tourists that visit our great state. So when the tourist signs up and in their respective states, when they come to Hawaii, the number shows up, their profile is going to show up? Yes, you know, it does. Huh. And the reason why I'm so emphatic about it is Thali and I visited one of the um, public safety answering points on 911 call centers on the mainland. And this is in Colorado. I made a test call with my mobile phone and it's my phone number. And guess what? My profile came up with all the information that I had preloaded. Wow. True test came out in Colorado. Because, you know, unfortunately, every year we have we have tourists that get, get lost or, you know, end up having an issue in the water. Um, Hiking. Yeah, oh, let's not talk about hiking. And I live by Manoa, and every time we see those helicopters going up, and it's unfortunate. But that's really interesting, and that's actually a, a great thing. So it's, state, it's nationwide then. Yes, it is, and that's why we're here, and we're so passionate about it, because we know eventually it can help save lives. So is it in Las Vegas? You know what? It's not in Las Vegas oh, County, no. but I believe it's in another county in Nevada, though. Well, because you know Hawaii people love to go to Las Vegas, right? Yes, they gotta go lobby their lawmakers. Yeah, you better, you know, yeah, okay, guys. When you guys go to California Hotel, you better go tell those guys. But uh, anyway, we're here with uh, Major now, Alan Nagata and Dahlia Burns from the HP, HPD, and we're talking about the Smart Nine One One. When we come back, we're going to talk about a new Nine One One program. It's a text to Nine One One, right? Great. That's anyway. Great. We'll be right back. Give us a short break uh, and uh, take get a glass of water, get something to drink, and come on back in about three minutes. Thank you. from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690, The Answer. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four and five night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from six ninety nine. Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide body seven sixty seven planes with complimentary in flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at five nine one forty seven seventy seven or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. 
Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Hauer from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. Welcome back to Generations Radio. I'm here with uh, Major Alan Nagata and Thalia Burns from the Honolulu Police Department. We're talking about the Smart 911 uh, program that's just come out. Um, and, but then you're also going to be very soon launching a major push for the Text 911 major. Can you explain to our audience what that's about? Okay. So, so text to 911, what that means is that you have to have a, a cell phone that is text capable and enabled. Um, so, so those cell phones that don't have that capability is not going to be able to text 911. So in your field that you would normally put in somebody's phone number, you would put 911 and then send them a text on what your emergency is. So, so the difference between that and smart 911 is you don't have to sign up. That's correct. Smart 911, you have to register. Text to 911 does not require you to register. Oh, how interesting. And I think, did, I, did you mention it to me last time? Was this is pretty interesting? It's pretty quick. Yes, Instead we did mention. Sign up and blah, blah, blah. I need an email, blah, blah, blah. Just, just text. Oh, it's interesting. That's correct. So it is on your phone. You have to have that capability. Right. Well, unfortunately, a lot of seniors don't have it, and I don't blame them. But um, it's, it's the response time, I think, that people need to think about. And so, you know, those emergency response things where your necklace or wristband, that costs between 25 and 35 bucks a month. Text is, doesn't cost anything, does it? No. Right? No. As long as your, your cell phone yeah, is yeah, able to do phone. it. Yes. I, mean, I think all of them are, are text enabled. You just got to be able to use it. That's correct. Right? Yes. Oh, it's interesting. interesting. Um, so it's available all of Hawaii or just Honolulu County? What's you know, neighbor is like? You know, right now we soft launched on December 21st of last year. And it's my understanding that our neighbor islands also have soft launched. Um, right now we're in the process of uh, sorting through some of the legal items that we need to mm -hmm. do to make an official launch. But we really hope to get this done very soon because, as I mentioned before, it's really important that we have the service offered to our um, public because it's great for those who um, cannot speak or hard of hearing. And it levels the playing field with those who have disabilities to get in contact with 911. Mm, interesting. So what, what, what's the true benefits? And, and you, it is available now, but you have, it's just a soft launch you did. Yeah, it's available. Um, we just didn't make the formal announcement. The true benefits is, you know, for someone who can't make a voice call to 911, like, uh, for example, if you're kidnapped or you're in a domestic violence situation, we have an example that occurred at the end of last year. And there was a domestic violence situation in Kalihi, and it was very early in the morning where a female reported that her significant other came home drunk, beat her up, and he basically was in bed with her, and she started checking her phone, Facebook, which he didn't think anything of, but she also went to her messaging. And with a leap of faith, she put in 911 thinking that she's just going to ask for help and see what happens, and she put in, I need help, and within seconds, the dispatcher responded, this is 911 emergency how can we help you? So they, the dispatcher called the phone number? Phone? Doesn't call. We return a text message because if we make oh. a call back to the person, we can put them in future or further harm, correct? I we want to keep it on the down low, so to speak, Percy. And what happened was she told us via text messaging her incident. She was abused and that her significant other was drunk and sleeping and that this was her location because that's the most probably critical information besides your emergency because right. we need to know where you are and the officers were dispatched and made the apprehension on the significant other for domestic violence. It's, it works. Hmm, it's interesting. So they don't have to sign up for 911 or, or smart 911, but they could, right? Yes. So in the text to 911, it's your, your text capable phone. In smart 911, we have what is called smart chat. And that's very similar to texting back and forth with, with the, the caller. 
So with the, the text to 911, yes, you're correct. They do not have to register. They don't have to sign up. They just have to make sure that their phone has the ability to do it. So we need a text-capable, enabled mobile phone that can send and receive text messages. And there's no fee to, the, to text 911. Yes, right. there's no fee. It's same like Smart 911, but let's keep in mind it's two different and distinct services. You can have both. You can create a Smart 911 safety profile, and you can also use text to 911. So should you, for example, personally decide to send us a text message to 911, it'll come through, and your safety profile will not pop up or come out at the call taker's display workstation because right. Smart 911 is only activated by a voice call to 911. So in other words, you have to make a phone call. It's it's separate and distinct. So when you text the 911, who does that go to? Does it go to your dispatch office or to a separate entity? No, it comes straight to the dispatch uh, comm center. Oh, so instead of talking, you're just, you're just going to type in, and if there's a, then if you want them to come, they'll come. That's correct. Uh, and let me just preface this by saying that we would <clears throat> prefer you to make a voice call because texting, yeah. as you know, takes a little bit longer to uh, send a text, to receive a text. So we would definitely prefer that you make the voice call. So if I call, you know, the reason why I say that is that I was in D.C. last week. I came back Friday night. And then what happens Monday morning? There was a shooting at, uh, at the Capitol. So I was thinking, I was down there. Yes, that's correct. Thursday afternoon. Actually, I was down there Friday night. Well, not Friday night. Thursday morning. Friday morning. But if I, if I texted because somebody I need a, I'm hiding out of somebody's shooting, if I texted, can you call me? Or does the, does the phone have, will you know where that phone's at? Do you know how I don't want to ask you a hard question. <clears throat> so just like any other cell call, right? Um, we get a, a proximity of where you're at. So we're going to be asking, where are you? Mm. Uh, where is your emergency? What building are you in? What is your address? We're already trained. Our people are trained to, to ask that number one question of the where. Um, so they won't know your location. Not exactly. Because actually, you know, Google is really good with that. Mm -hmm. They know where you're at. You know, just press on location on your smartphone. Because when I was in D.C., they had stuff for D.C. I was kind of impressed with that. Yes. But yes, Percy. Okay. So that's but for your personal cell phone, right? And right. that's a privacy issue right. that we just can't um, yeah, enable, know. right? And um, what we want to clarify is that not every county or call center throughout the United States oh, offer yeah. text to 911. Yeah. And if you send a text message to a 911 call center that doesn't offer the service, you'll get what's called a bounce back message, and they'll uh, tell you that they don't offer the service and make a call to 911. Oh, so the counties have to have that text service then, just like the smart 911. Well, they don't have to have it at this point. So if you, you're in a county that doesn't have, that doesn't offer text to 911, you'll get a message that's, that says I this count, this uh, municipality uh, does not offer the service. And again, you know, there should be no reason why every county doesn't have it. This should be a nationwide service for every county and every state, don't you think? Well, you would think. It just depends on, what, I mean, I don't know if Verizon or those guys have help out or Oceanic or whoever, you know, those guys, the carriers would, would are, are using this. But I think it's a huge way to save somebody's life, let alone the cost of an emergency. I mean, you guys know what the cost. You know, I didn't, I just found out recently that, you know, when you, when you call, 911 and you need you have let's say you you need an ambulance there's two types of ambulances right right not sure one that'll come to your house and service you but if they have to take you to the hospital that's another that's a separate one you well that's that? something that we learned just now i just learned it at, at, a, at a senior thing mm. just uh before i left for dc um yeah because i was at um um at a park and there were a bunch of EMS guys. So I said, these guys are the free ones. I said, what do you mean? Oh, they'll come to the house and ask you questions. But if you have to be transported, that's where the cost comes into play. Right. That's that we know about. Definitely. Yeah. So I, but I didn't know there's two different types. Right. Definitely. We're aware of that, the cost. Yeah. But there's one that's free. One that is, you know, I ask you questions, things like that. But if you have to be transported, then there's an added cost. And that's, so I tell, they said, well, if, I'm, Unless you can afford it, don't tell me you want to go. Oh, my son will take me to the hospital because that, that ride to the hospital is very expensive. Right. It's actually quite large. And yeah. that's one of the things that um, people tell us about when they need assistance. Yeah. 
So last time you were here, you, you brought up some really good stories. Can we tell those stories again about certain situations on the mainland that's happened that, that the nine one, smart 911 has, has saved people's lives or situations? Yeah, sure. You know, we, 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 we keep telling this story. I believe it happened in um, Washington, D.C., and smart 911 folks told us about it. And um, if so I'm, real quick, straight. So smart 911 is in D.C.? Yeah, that's okay, exactly. Because I brought it up because you said right. you were in D.C. Yeah. So I wanted to tie that in. Okay. But a gentleman registered for the pro service about a year or so ago in the summer when they launched the program. Thought nothing of it. He was retired and he was walking around in the city and he had one medical condition. It was anaphylactic shock for bee stings. And lo and behold, he got stung by a bee. And as he was going into anaphylactic shock, he took out his trusty mobile phone, sped down 911 collapsed and went unconscious in the middle of the road. That call went into 911, and we all know what happens when something happens on the road, whether it's an accident, collision, or somebody faints or goes unconscious. There's more than a dozen calls that come in for the same incident. Right. And what happened was the call takers at the communication center in D.C. put their stories together, and what they discovered was it must be this gentleman whose call to 911 came in with the safety profile saying anaphylactic shock with bee stings because the line was an open call and they could hear the calls going by. So what happened was with that knowledge beforehand, they sent an officer as well as an ambulance. In Honolulu, without that type of information, probably the officer will be sent, confirm when they arrive that you are unconscious and then ask for the ambulance. So that's going to double the response times. Wow, that's that's amazing because, uh, you know, the traffic is the worst in D.C., any, you know. I was shocked how bad the traffic was in D.C. As they say it's the worst in the nation. And, you know, just to go over the river or go, go like a mile and a half to get in the city, it's horrendous. Yeah, we've seen it. We're in D.C. in okay. February, right? <laughs> well, you're going to go to Boston, you said, this year? Yes. In May? Yes. Oh. Well, you know, I love the Boston Red Sox, so I'm not to get off topic. But So uh, do you have any presentations or workshops coming up that we can talk about or where you're going to be next? <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, we just got through doing a presentation for Local 996, and we, that? um, that's the Teamsters. Oh, okay. And we did the Smart 911 presentation for them, and we encouraged them to, you know, sign up. And we also talked about Text to 911. We don't have anything yet, but if anybody's interested, they definitely can give us a holler, you know, and we'll come out, especially if they're big, and we're more than happy to help people register for the service. Well, I know we're going to be doing some events at um, the, this is the big Windward uh, Church. I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. We'll be doing workshops for them in the Windward side. Uh, our, you'll be at the August 20th Aging in Place workshop. You know what? I got a clarification. Um, I need some help on this. April 30th, Community Day of Service, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on Beckley Street in Kalihi. We're going to be here for the community fair, and we're going to be doing our Smart 91 presentations. We're bringing our laptop computers. We're also bringing our... Um, paper and pencil so we can register people both ways, okay? And we'll be there, I think, 9 to 1. 9 to 1. And what day is that? April 30th? That's going to be Saturday, April 30th, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that will be on Beckley Street. Wow, and I, I believe it's right close to Farrington High School. Right across. Beckley, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, so were you aware that next Wednesday they have the Kapuna Power Day at the Capitol? i seen the flyers as we just drove by. Okay. So, um, Senator Brickwood Galateria, that's his deal. Um, you might want to contact his office uh, uh, and see if you can get a booth or have someone send one of your offices down. Sure. If worst case, you should have some brochures and the sign up for them. Fantastic. Know. Thanks for but the yeah, update. That, they'll get a few hundred people there. Um, they're going to have entertainment there. Um, but it's a great way to get, sign them up. But yeah, if you could email that, and then uh, we'll get you in contact with ARP and the seating, um, the Alzheimer's Association. But um, anyway, so the Smart 911, now real quick. So once I, like I signed up, and so I got a text and an email, I haven't done it yet, to what, what is that? Now you have to update your profile? So yes, that's an alert um, to tell you to go into your profile and make sure that it's current. And if everything's current, then you just leave your profile alone. If there's any changes that you need to make, then you update the profile and you save the change. So Smart 911 uh, is supposed to send a notification every six months so that the comm center has the most updated information on your profile. And it's like, like my situation, I did it updated because I was traveling. Uh, what happened to my profile? So 
if you don't update it, it gets temporarily suspended until you go into your profile. And what I mean by that is if you make a call to 911, your profile will not come up. Oh. Well, they should put an asterisk say, this is an old profile. Use it, but in understanding that it, doesn't, it, it may not be most current. Because that's where you lose it. Because guys like myself, I'm super busy. They should think about that. But I, mean, I get it. <laughs> Understood. And that's something that we actually could bring back to Smart 911 as, as a concern. Yeah, because especially for kids, if they're, they're professionals or working, it's really hard sometimes to keep track of everything. I mean, I have a hard enough time just keeping track of my, my passwords. <laughs> I mean, we have three, four emails. You know, we have a website. We have to, I, I pay everything online. I must have 10 passwords. Yeah. You know, we but, all do. Um, anyway, so what's the best thing? What, what, give me a little elevator speech. When you go out to an event real quick, because uh, I know we talked about a lot of details, but in a nutshell, again, uh, tell our audience what it's about. Because I know you're going to be on KITV pretty soon, but and that's three to five minute interview. But real quick, sign up for Smart 911. It's free. It's great. It can make Honolulu safer for our kupuna. All you need to do is input a little bit of information. Let us know beforehand. You're preparing for an emergency before it happens. No one ever prepares to call 911. Get that information in so the first responders can help you make Honolulu safer. Yeah. And, and Thaley, when you go out, what kind of response do you get? Because I know you do a lot of the presentations as well, right? We get a very positive response from especially our kupuna. So we've been invited to a lot of community centers. Um, so our response has been really great. And we, we're going to do what we have to do to sign up as many people as we can. And so you have about 2,200 signed up right now. Um, we have almost oh, 3,000 oh yeah, now. Almost, that's yes. actually last year's number, right? Exactly. So, guys, you got to help us out. Reach 10,000 signups. But that's just individual residents, right? That doesn't include all the other phone numbers, all right? That's Phones correct. they have, right? That's correct. One safety profile could have many phone numbers on it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. So, don't forget smart911.com or you can text uh, if, you're, if your phone is text capable. Text to 911 and you can let them know what kind of issue or concern you have. Now, so if, so if somebody fell down and they can't talk, then they can use it smart, the, the text thing, right? And it, Absolutely, say, yes. Mm. Absolutely. I have an emergency. I fell. Uh, this is my address. Yes, absolutely. Just thought about it. I'm looking at different situations because there was actually in a conference in D.C., there was a couple um, companies that were doing the technology within the home. And it was interesting. Technology is where it's going, by the way. Um, as our greatest generation slowly passes on, the baby boomers are coming up and technology is going to be huge. Uh, is there any talk about anything that's going to incorporate it with any other kind of devices or any kind of websites or are there, is there any other technology they're going to try and incorporate that with this? Well, in you know? the future, um, all of our 911 centers are getting ready to, um, the future is going to be photos and videos. And so text is our first step at getting towards photos and videos. That's going to be maybe a, a couple years down the line. But for right now, text to 911 is the newest. Wow. Yeah, that's, you know, we're, we're going to see more and more of that. And, and I just thought of something, you know, like I said, I kind of think quick. Can you put on your profile and you let me know? You know, I, I've, I almost get a case two or three times a week where somebody got scammed. And can you would you would you put um, um, something about you know maybe she has cognitive cognitive issues and has been scammed before or something like that because I've seen typically when people get scammed when I get the call or my friends call me it's not the first time I've seen times mm -hmm. as many as five times being scammed and for some reason they start off with oh just send me fifty bucks Alan and uh, we're gonna give you fifty thousand but then you know you send him fifty thousand say thank you very much this really so I, it's working right see I called you back now here's the deal the secondary thing is you can get more money and then they get on and on and on. You know that 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 would be a good idea I would say because you can put down that you're a victim right of identity theft or some kind of white collar crime because when you put that down at least the call taker knows ahead of time what this person went through. Yeah. And that gives us, as a police officer, we responding to your call for service. We already know what you went through and we can be much more sympathetic and empathetic too because let's be honest, even we experience crimes as victims of, of ourselves because someone um, got my credit card number recently and I had to deny you? the charges. Yeah. 
And that, I went through, you know, a lot of work to straighten that out. So I kind of understand how it feels, you know. But giving us that information beforehand is really big because it can help us prepare to serve the public. Wow, well, great. So is there a phone number they can reach out to or email you guys? Who would they, who would they call if they want to have a presentation at their church or their retirement group? What they can do is go to www.honoluluPD.org. There's a number on that website, and I believe it's tied to our PBX line, and they can call our comm center, or they can also request a speaker on that website to get a presentation. HonoluluPD.com? HonoluluPD.org. Oh, Honolulu P, because I just typed it in here and it didn't come out. It came out to some website here. So Honolulu, I'm doing it, guys, right online as we was talking about it. PD.org? Yes, and that's Welcome. our website for the department. And then from there, see, when people listen to the thing, they're going to probably do it like me. I just going to do it right now. So on your website here, you got the great picture of your chief. And where do I go from there? Do you know? Exactly. Yes. I think you got to go to like the upper right corner and there's there's a place where it says contact us and you also yes. can request a speaker also okay. or a presentation. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's got a nice website. It's very easy. Thank you. So you contact. So, but to see, it says situation requiring emergency call 911. But otherwise for regular assistance call, you dial 529-3111. Exactly. And like I said, the other alternative is you can request a speaker. And I believe it's on the upper left side of the top portion of the website. The, uh, the request a speaker? Yes. And, and contact us? Yes. You got to look for it though. Oh, yeah. So you know what I don't find? I don't see a search thing. So what about community? Where would, do you have a smart 911 page? Or, okay. Well, there's a calendar here. Oh, okay. Speaker so you, requests. So you got to go to the calendar, I guess? I guess so. It looks like it, but it says speaker, speaker request. request. Yes. Oh, I see. And you can request the smart 911 presentation. See, next time you got to come out, you got to talk about it because you have, uh, you have some great topics, adult topics and youth topics. So adult you. topics, you can actually, hey, it's pretty cool. You can ask, call HPD or look on their website, speaker request, active shooter, critical incident, crime prevention, safety awareness. Work safety, senior topics, strategic actions for emergency response, traffic safety, pedestrian safety, crime prevention. We're a smart 911. <laughs> That's why you got to ask request for the speaker. <laughs> I see. Well, here's the topics here. But yeah, you might want to tell them. You better add in smart 911. But you have pedestrian we'll safety. Do. But um. But is there a way to get call you guys? Is there a phone number we yep, call? Yeah, the number that you saw. Okay, so the 529? Yes, you can ask for us or me if need be. And if they want personally a presentation, they can give us a call and the message will get to me. Okay, so it's 529-3111. Um, but yeah, this, this nice website. I didn't realize you had that many speakers on all those various topics. Yeah, we do. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Major Allen Nagata and Thalia Burns, thank you so much. Uh, we'll have to come back on. But, yeah, uh, get on. Uh, talk to Moani over there at KITV News. Um, and, it, you know, they're going to post their that interview as well on their website. So I don't know if you guys have a place to put these videos or like this show or keep the link and you can push people there. But uh, please do email me that, that fill-out form they can do because we're out and about quite a bit. We're going to be there. If you don't, if I don't see you at the Capitol next week, we can put that out there. Uh, we do. There's a big event in, in Kahala Mall in May, which we're going to be part of. We are one of the sponsors. And, you know, Kyle Mall has got a great senior area. Yeah, we'd love to be there. So email All me. All of them. Yeah, the May event. And then, of course, our August 20th. I'll get back to August 20th because we're right in the planning stages right now. But I think, it, worst case, a booth. But I'll see if we can have room for it to be as a speaker. But uh, So thank you very much, uh, Major and Thalia Burns. Thank um, you. That's thank Smart you. 911 and also text to 911. So... But anyway, uh, we do want to finish the show with letting you know that April 6th, next week, um, will be the uh, Kapuna Power Day. But in regards to the conference I went to, I wanted to talk about briefly about that. The growing concerns that we've seen here in Hawaii are Alzheimer's dementia, identity theft, elder abuse, um, and seniors and homeless seniors that are really going to have health issues and, and cognitive, cognitive issues. So please take note of that. Uh, very shortly, you'll see, hopefully next month, you'll see a public awareness campaign about long-term care and high cost of long-term care. So um, please look out for that and look out for the, these new shows. And our April, uh, May issue coming out very shortly will feature Lanakila Senior Center, by the way. So thank you so much. So anyway, we'll see you guys next week. As always, 
Aloha and live well. Thank you.